Welcome to 20th Century Boy. My name is Radio Mario, and this is the inside of my mind. Welcome back to another episode of 20th Century Boy, a podcast by me, Radio Mike, writer and producer from here in Australia, just trying to make his way through life. And what is this podcast I hear you ask? Well, 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 well. It's the conversations you wish you were having about the stuff that no one else cares about. That's the premise of this show, and I'm glad you're joining me again. Um, as I put together an, uh, another 45 minutes to an hour of a one-sided conversation that we are about to have. And boy, oh boy, is today a good one. No. Um, you know what I've realized? I've realized this podcast is like the counter to the oversaturation of the professional podcast market. And when I say professional, I mean like commercial, commercial um overproduced, sometimes pointless, but so is this podcast, right? This is the counter to that. This is the pirate radio of podcasts. This is like, this is like the underground podcast, right? Because podcasts now, as you know, it's just, it's just so saturated. It's just everything now. I talked about it last week on the show and thanks to everyone who got in touch with me. I had a bit of a menti B on the last week's show, but podcasts now, they're just... It's just this saturated market. It's just like, and and I feel like, I don't know, like this podcast will never be a, like it'll never be a commercial art. Like, I mean, it'll never just be this product. This podcast isn't a product. This is like a weekly blog about my life. And if you're here for the ride, fuck yeah, join me. I'd love to have you here. But I see all these podcasts now and I'm genuinely just like, what is the point of this what is the point of this show? And people might say that about my show, but like these corporate commercialized overproduced podcasts. And I'm just like, this is the counter to that. If you want, this podcast will never, ever be professional. Exhibit A, before I started recording, I dropped the camera. It's now broken and the battery door doesn't shut. So now if you want to, and, and if the battery door doesn't shut, the battery can't sit in, which means you can't start the camera managed to literally just force it in, which isn't good for the camera, but I didn't have a choice, right? Battery door of the camera's broken. The mic leads need replacing. There's been like a beep sound on all the podcasts for the last few weeks. I've bought some new mic leads. All my SD cards are full. No one, there's no one holding me accountable on this podcast, right? And that's because it's a completely independent podcast. There's no outside help. And when shit gets busy, it gets busy. That's just doing the podcast. I don't have any big organization behind me making my videos, cutting my podcast, marketing, PR, all of the above. I don't have that. And this is what an independent podcast looks like in 2022. And how good is it? How bloody good is it? Of course, speaking of the broken uh, the broken camera, the new mic leads, I bought some new SD cards. Would love to see a bit of support coming through on the Patreon, patreon.com slash radio mic. Jump on board. Um, at the moment, you can get the Pat and Mike show a bonus podcast with me and producer Pat. It is so much fun doing it. And we have so many, we have about 65 patrons at the moment. Would love to get it back over 70 because we were sitting over 70, but it resets every month. So I never really know exactly where it is. But if you've been considering jumping on the Patreon, here's a big push for the Patreon, patreon.com slash radio Mike. Get the Pat and Mike show. Here's a tease. Like, Often the Pat and Mike show just descends into chaos. This week it started with me just making fun of Pat, um, who's a lovely person that I don't know why I felt like I had to make fun of him because he wears slacks and Pat wears slacks. Hashtag Pat wears slacks has become a running gag on the show. He basically wears like old man pants with an old man belt and it's really weird. Here's a little snippet. The thing again about your outfits, Pat, is like... Like, your top half is, like, young and trendy. Yeah. Then your bottom half, you wear grandpa slacks. Oh, and I'm also and wearing you, leather black Converse. And then you, That's pretty now trendy. Now you have leather Converse. Yeah. Just get normal Converse. I do why, have normal Converse. Why do you always have to do everything weird? Could you imagine Hamish and Andy, like, being, you know, Hamish and Andy, driving you home back in the day? No, because Hamish and Andy don't wear slacks. <laughs> I'm telling you now, if Hamish or Andy <laughs> came to do a podcast and were wearing grandpa slacks... 
They would just be... The, it, you would never hear the end of it. No, but it like, would become a meme on the show. Like, like, like it has on this. Uh, yeah. Like, hashtag Pat Wears Slacks. Hey, Shanani, drop your home. Pat Wears Slacks. Pat Wears Slacks. Uh, go and get the Pat and Mike show. It's so much fun. Patreon.com slash Ready Mike. We'd love to see you all here. It helps us cover costs of all the stuff I accidentally break, as well as just hosting the podcast online and etc. Now, uh, obviously last week, as I said, I talked about uh, some of the... Some of the frustrations I've had just generally about the oversaturization of the content market and everything and just like, you know, wondering what the future holds for me and, and what I do. Um, a lot of you wrote in and uh, let's just do a quick one of these. All the Ryan's that you sent in. Um, look, I, I got a lot of really nice write-ins from people reaching out and I wanted to say thank you to all of you. Um, Patreo Pug, who is one of our Patreon supporters, sent a really long and nice message. Um, not going to read it out just because it feels like I'm um, uh, sort of celebrating my achievements because he actually listed a bunch of my achievements. It was a very well thought out letter, but thank you to everyone who wrote in. Um, new listener though, Radio Simon. Well, I don't know if he's a new listener, but it's certainly his first interaction. Um, and I noticed that Simon is a guy who was on Survivor Australia. Survivor Australia, season six and season eight. And he's like super ripped and really cool. So that's cool. It's cool to have a cool a cool listener. And I assume most of you are cool. But thanks, Simon. He sent in the following. Hey, mate, just finished listening to you, to the pod this week. Sorry to hear you're feeling a little bit lost and flat at the moment. Don't lose touch with your roots and the reason why you started doing what you're doing in the first place because you loved it. I'm sure your audience has grown over time because of you and your content, not just conforming to the masses, trying to go viral. I completely agree with you. It is fucked and it also feels like it's going stale at the same time. An organic moment will always outlast a viral moment. Good luck getting through the rut. You got this. And I, and I thought that was great because, you know, I do sometimes have to go back to like, why did I want to do a podcast? Why did I want to do this? And I got to say, and I need to do this more, but like, the community and the connection I have with the people who listen to this podcast is like one of my favorite parts of my life. Like just the community we have, the people who listen to my content, whether it's this, whether it's Harry Potter and the boys or anything else, the community is just so strong and so involved and engaged. And like, you know, there's a discord that runs, that's really fun. There's people in my Instagram DMs like, I realize that connecting with you guys and hearing from you guys is the thing that I love most about doing this show. And I've always said this, I don't say it enough, but you guys help build this show. So if there's anything you just genuinely want me to talk about on the show, just tell me, just send me a message and be like, Hey, can you talk about this? Hey, what do you think of this? Hey, what do you think of this? You guys help build the show. And you know, I can't thank you guys enough for listening, for being part of this show, for contributing to this show and for yeah, just supporting this journey. Like this is again, four and a half years into the podcast and it's really fun. Um, but it's awesome. Just, you know, the familiar faces and names that pop up and the, and, and it's really weird. Sometimes I'm like, I see the download numbers of the show and I'm like, oh, like all these people are just like listening to me talk once a week. Like how weird. Some of you are listening to like all my stuff. And then I'm just like, I don't know. I just feel right. Like I'm literally speaking in my empty apartment, looking at a camera I'm just like, I don't don't know if anyone listens to this. But then Patreon Pug, who I said wrote that really nice email, one of the things he did say was like he listens to, he watches the podcast on YouTube every time he's working and he just loves it. And he's like, I don't want you to stop because I love listening to your show. And I realize like a lot of the time I am like, oh, what's a good angle? What's something that will go viral? Whereas like producer Pat is always like, oh, people, you know, you're, the, the hardcore listeners of this show, the people that love this show, just want to hear you talk shit about shit. Um, that's a bit flippant, but you know what I mean? Like I listen to a lot of solo podcasts because it does feel like companionship. Like I listen to a lot of Lewis Spears' podcast, Spearhead Sundays. And it just like, I don't, sometimes he talks about like YouTubers and stuff that I don't really know much about, but I just enjoy it. Cause I like listening to him speak. Cause he's a good speaker and he's an interesting speaker. Um, and he just like, yeah. So it's like, I guess just, just, you know, reassessing that at all times and, you know, there's more growth to go, but 
I think the main thing I want to get through just at this top part is like, if you're a listener of this show and you enjoy this show and you silently listen from the from behind the scenes and you've never engaged with the show in any way, uh, just like say hey, slide into my DMs, say hi to me, like that makes my day. That's the thing I like. Send an email, radiomikepod at gmail.com. Leave a voicemail, 1-800-438-353. Like, if you've never done it and you're anxious about it, don't be. Please, I implore you to get in touch with the show. Um, that's what I wanted to say at the top. One thing I wanted to to just, just raise, because I don't know if this is a weird thing to do or not. Um, I wanted to know... Is it weird to brush your teeth in the shower? Is that weird? Because over the years, you know, I have a toothbrush by the sink, but I also have a toothbrush in the shower. Because for me, I think brushing your teeth in the shower is peak efficiency. I don't know why everyone doesn't do it. But I have had people who have been in my bathroom at times been like, why do you have a toothbrush in the shower? Because I'm fucking brushing my teeth in the shower. Is it weird to brush your teeth in the shower? In my opinion, not at all. The shower is literally where you're washing your entire body. You're washing every single part of your body under your arms, under every hole and crack in your body, like anywhere you can find, you're trying to get dirt and stink out. Sometimes we forget that's the point of the shower. The shower is not, in fact, a time to chill out and have fun. I mean, it's become that. And those are the pleasures of living in a first world country and being able to afford hot running water, right? That you can just have a shower and just stand there and be like, this is great. This is awesome, right? But at the end of the day, showers were designed to bathe, to wash off the dirt, all, wash all the dirt off our bodies. So I don't understand why it is then weird to brush your teeth in the shower when you're cleaning everything else. Why would you not clean your teeth as well? Get it all out. Come out of the shower feeling fresh. You wash your hair, you wash your teeth, you you wash your body. It's all done, right? For me, the shower is like my morning shower is sacred to me. It's the first thing I do when I get up is go and have a shower. And it's sacred to me because like... For me, the morning shower is the final barrier between being in bed and having to start your day. It's like being born for the day. That, it's a, that's a great analogy, Mike. Well done. The, the morning shower is like being born for the day, right? You're in bed. That's the womb. The bed is the womb. You're comfortable. You're wrapped up. You're, you're just in your bed. Ah, oh, this is so warm. I never want to have to get out of here. Suddenly your alarm goes off. That's the doctor being like, you're in labor or my water's broke. And then you're like, ah, oh, God, like there is a deadline for how long I can stay in this bed. And then you get out of bed. You go to the shower. That's you being born, right? It is the final moment of pleasure where you don't have any responsibilities and you don't have to think about any responsibilities for the day. You get out of the shower. That's it. One of my ex-girlfriends used to always like talk in the morning shower. Like she she would get in the shower with me and just like talk. And I would just be like, mate, I don't, I don't want to talk in my morning shower. This is not the time for me to be thinking. I'm being born for the day. Does anyone else feel that? I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk to you about the day in the shower. This is the last time for the day that I don't have to think about the day. That I just go, ah, this is awesome. This water is so awesome. Anyway, just my thoughts on showers. Is it weird to brush your teeth in the shower? Can people let me know their thoughts on that? I do have a few things that I just want to talk about today, but it's uh, I've also done a bit of pre-prep for today's show. So um, one thing I wanted to talk about was the news that... uh, My generation's favourite TV show, Thank God You're Here, is returning to TV in 2023. That's the theme song to the show, by the way. But yes, Thank God You're Here will be returning to TV. If you're not familiar, Thank God You're Here was an enormously 
successful and popular TV show in like the mid 2000s here in Australia, created by Working Dog, who are the people behind um, the Cheap Seats, which Sammy Garlip worked on. And um, have you been paying attention? They also did movies like The Castle, really big, popular Australian and successful Australian comedy writing production sort of group. You know, it's Tom Gleisner, Santo Chilaro, um, Rob Sitch, a bunch of those other guys. And then, you know, now you've got like Tim McDonald, who's part of it, and Mel Bracewell, like the new generation. And Thank God You're Here was just this amazing show um, that everybody loved. And it was this improvisational comedy show where four comedians come on and each one goes into a scenario, walks through a door in a random costume, having no idea what's going to happen. And they're greeted with, thank God you're here. And then the scenario starts and they have to improv funny lines. Hilarious show was always amazing. Um, also got one of my favorite and most quoted things of all time is the, the time in the show Summer Heights High when Mr. G, the drama teacher, is playing thank God you're here with his students. Thank God you're here. Where have you been, bitch? I just, uh, there's so many of those and it's so funny. Um, but I think it's interesting that the show's coming back. It had such an all-star cast back in the day. And the thing about it was back in the 2000s, internet was nowhere near what it was now. Like, you know, you barely, text messaging wasn't what it is now. Online content didn't exist really. It was just free-to-air TV, right, that everyone would talk about. It was back in those days when TV was so big and so many people would watch this show. And I remember being a kid and it was on a Wednesday night on Channel 10 and everyone would come to school on the Thursday and just be talking about everything and trying to remember the lines and the funny things. Hamish Blake did it a lot. Um, he was amazing on it. You had like Angus Samson. You had Arne Doe. Um, uh, I'm sure like uh, Sean McAuliffe might have done one. Pete Hellier did some. Ryan Shelton did a couple back in the day. Um, Julia Zamiro, Fifi Box, all these great Aussie comedians. Arj Barker, they all had a shot at Thank God You're Here. And it was always hilarious. It never missed. But then I think after four years or so, it just sort of started getting a bit tired and it ended up going off the air. And now it's finally back like 20 years later, 15 years later. I'm really interested in who's going to be a part of it. Celia Pacuola is hosting and she's great. I think she'll be really good. I think that Tim McDonald will probably be the Tom Gleisner role. He was like a judge on the show and he used to like, you know, give the review at the end. I think Tim McDonald could be really good with that and I would not be surprised if he was part of it. But then in terms of like a new generation of comics going through it, and I genuinely think... If you were a creative kid back in the day, your dream was to be on this show. Like, I wanted to be on this show. I asked on my stories who people would like to see, and I got a lot of responses. Um, Sam Campbell was one. I think he'd be good. Becky Lucas, I'm sure she'll show up. Conchetta Caristo from Triple J, she'd be great. She's really funny. Ed Cavalier, Kitty Flanagan... Anne Edmonds, Lloyd Langford, Mel Buttle, Hamish coming back, Aaron Chen, Alexi Toliopoulos, Ursula Carlson, Hamish and Andy, Matt Stewart, Luke McGregor, um, Jerry Seinfeld, obviously won't happen, Michelle Brazier, Josh Lawson, the hosts of Harry Potter and the Boys. Um, like, And there is like this huge new generation of talent coming through um, Australian comedy now. I wonder if they're going to have sort of like comedians my age like Conchetta or like Neil Kohatka or like Nino Yama and that kind of group of comedians or if they're going to go more like the the older like thir late 30s mid to late 30s 40s kind of comedians like Ann Edmonds, Dill Rook, um, Lloyd Langford like those kind of people but overall like I'm excited it's back I don't think it'll have the same reach and appeal that it originally did I think they'll definitely like take advantage of the digital content and repost highlights. But I always wonder now when I see TV shows pop up and have like a TikTok account and an Insta account and do reels and stuff, I'm like, does the, I mean, I guess it's just to entice people to watch the show when it's on. But I just think like, I don't know. I just don't know if it, if it would translate to that audience. I think it's more just awareness that the show exists I don't think that means that people are going to be more likely to sit down at 7.30 on a Wednesday and watch the show. But anyway, I think it's really cool that it's coming back. I think everyone's wanted it to come back for a really, really long time. I 
I've got, a, I've still got a few things. Oh, there's a bunch of things to talk about. I thought I'd be light today, but I'm probably not going to be. And the fact that I say that on air, on the pod and don't cut it out is why I'll never be a, a, one of those slick uh, commercial conglomerate podcast guys. This is the amateur stuff you're paying for, which is that you pay $0. Patreon.com slash radio mic. Help me fix the camera. Um, Tonight, I'm going to the Super Mario Brothers movie. So excited. I've talked a lot about it on the show. Um, we're going to the opening night, the special screening at 6 p.m. I think it's at Melbourne Central. It's going to be fun. Cannot wait for the movie. I've heard, basically, review-wise, what I've heard is, and by the time this is out, I would have seen it, but I currently haven't seen it. What I've heard is, if you love Mario, you'll love the movie. It's full of Easter eggs, but, like, critically, it's been, like, pretty mixed reception, which is, like... I said I thought it would get like a 70 on Metacritic. It's currently on a 43. So it's like, it's not a great film, but I think gamers will love the movie and I'm really excited for it. Can't wait to see it with Pat. I probably should have played the um, segment ID, which is uh, Mike's bigger year of big year of live music and events, but that's what it is. Um, But there's one thing I wanted to do today because you're all welcome to jump in the podcast discord. Just send me a message. I'll link you to the discord. Um, which is like a group chat where we all chat about stuff, you know, movies, TV shows, games, the podcasts, general stuff, travel, whatever you want to talk about. There's a channel for it in the Discord. It's actually quite quite chaotic in the Discord. There's always these random threads that pop up. Like there's a thread called, um, is it raining? And people just take photos when it's raining and just say, yes, it's raining. It's just, it's chaos. I don't know how it's all gotten to this point. But anyway, um, there's a guy in the Discord, friend of the show, and um, friend, uh, listener of the show, friend of the show. Um, his name is Patreo Whitey. He's actually one of our Patreons on the executive producer tier, so he gives a lot to the show. Thank you, Whitey. Whitey has this thing that is becoming renowned in the Discord that he hates spoilers. He hates spoilers for movies, for games, for TV shows, whatever it is. If you spoil something for him, he hates you. He's really pissed off about it. And I totally get it. Like, I'm about to say a spoiler for Mandalorian Season 2, if you haven't seen it. Someone in the Discord spoiled that Luke Skywalker shows up in the last episode. And I was so annoyed about it, right? Such a big spoiler. Like, no one knew Luke Skywalker was going to show up in the season finale of Mandalorian Season 2. Then he shows up. Bam. Awesome moment. But why do he takes spoilers to the extreme? Like... He basically thinks everything is a spoiler. Like, he wants to know zero, literally nothing about a movie before he sees it, which includes watching the trailer, right? He thinks trailers are spoilers. I would argue trailers are just marketing material designed to make you want to see the movie, but he thinks that that trailers are spoilers. The other thing was, like, a, a recent scandal in the Discord with Whitey was that there's a movie called Cocaine Bear, right? And someone said, oh, I can't wait to watch Cocaine Bear. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a movie about a bear. It's a true story about a bear who accidentally inhaled like a bunch of cocaine and went insane. And Whitey claimed that that was a spoiler, to which everyone was like, how is that a spoiler? And then Whitey said, well, I didn't know there was a bear in it. And everyone was like, the name of the movie is Cocaine Bear. Whitey said, yeah, but it could have been about anything. That doesn't confirm that there's an actual bear or that it's about that. And everyone was like, Whitey, this is excessive. So you can't post... He doesn't like people posting trailers or talking about trailers. Basically, even the title of movies are a spoiler for Whitey. And then everyone just started mocking it and being like, basically, you just should never say anything because anything could be a spoiler. I think Patreon David, another member of the Patreon, said, um, make sure you don't tell Whitey what day it is tomorrow because you might be spoiled by it. Like, it's a bit excessive. So what I decided to do today before recording is I wanted to ring Whitey, tell him that I saw the Super Mario Bros. movie last night, which I didn't. And, oh, and that's the other thing. I did a video, a clip from this show where I talked about how I want Wario to be in the post credit scene of the Mario movie. And I did put it as a clip on YouTube and I said, Wario confirmed for Mario movie? Question mark, question mark, question mark, right? It's a good performing video for me because you always have to use clickbait titles on YouTube, right? You just do. That's how it works. It's really annoying, but you have to use clickbait titles that piss people off to get them to click the video. And that came up as a notification on Whitey's phone and he claimed that I had spoiled it for him. And I said, no, no, it's just speculation, whatever. 
decided to call him, tell him I saw the Super Mario Bros. movie last night and just slip in that Wario appears in the post credit scene, keeping in mind I haven't seen it yet, and then tell him a little bit more about the movie and just see what he thinks. See what he says. See how upset he actually gets. So, without further ado, here's my little prank call on Patreon, Whitey. Michael? Hey, mate. How you going? Good. How are you? Yeah, good. I just saw you chatting in the Discord, so I thought I'd give you a buzz just to say hey. Oh, hey. Done much this week? No, not at all. I haven't been too busy. I saw the... We saw the Mario movie last night, and, like, because Wario pops up at the end, which is awesome. Great, yeah. Peach is, like, a really strong role. Luigi's more the one that gets sort of kidnapped by Bowser, and, like, it's so... so and then Mario and Peach go to save Luigi. Right, okay. Are you upset? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Why are you upset? No, I will be upset if that's the actual plotline of the movie. Why would you be upset? Because someone's spoiling a movie for me. All of that was in the trailer, except the Wario bit. But I, I haven't seen the trailer. Oh, but it's publicly available information in the trailer. Well, yeah, I mean, so is the synopsis of the movie, I would imagine. Yeah, but the trailer's not the synopsis. It's just, like, marketing for the movie. Sure, but publicly available, if that's your bar. Like, I'm pretty sure I can tell you some publicly available things that you don't want to know. I didn't realise I was spoiling it, because to me, like, if I, it's just in the trailer. Like, if you go and watch the trailer, because then you'll know, like, sort of what the movie's about and stuff. Well, that's, that's actually the reason I don't watch trailers for movies, because they spoil them. So I've kind Something of... Something that you're well aware of, so I'm of, assuming that's not the real plot line. I've kind of spoiled the post credit scene then. Yeah. Hey, guess what? Hey, what? I haven't seen the movie. I just made all that up. Oh, he pranked me. Oh, no. Ha <laughs> ha, you fucking loser. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> got him. We fucking got him. <laughs> yeah, I, I forgot to mention, I wanted to do it like so. I was just slipping it in without him getting a chance to have any warning that I was going to spoil it for him. Um, but yeah, there you go. He's very protective. But um, I actually, I mean, he will find this out when he sees it, but I... Like, that does actually happen in the trailer, the, the Luigi being kidnapped stuff. But anyway, he has to deal with that himself. Uh, <laughs> another thing that involves uh, a, a new segment that I teased a few weeks ago, and if you've been following the show for the last season, you will know I created two AI voices of myself. One of them was called Radio Pert, um, and Radio Pert, it was really bad at, at adapting my voice into an AI bot and it and it sounded like I had like an American South African kind of accent. And then the other one was Jibber Mike, which was used on a free software um, that you have to pay to rem- like every few words it says gibberish because it only has like a 1000 word vocabulary. So you have to pay to get rid of the gibberish, but we have no money on this podcast. So I had to, um, I actually had to, um, just keep the gibberish in. Then I did a poll asking who was the better uh, AI voice and Jibber Mike won. So Jibber Mike is the official AI voice of the show. Then a lot of people started saying they thought Jibber Mike was almost too accurate of my voice and it was like an elaborate bit from me to try and fool people into thinking that Jibber Mike was in fact not um, an AI, uh, was an AI voice when it was actually just me recording it. Um, no one has submitted any more evidence, but I did say, well, Jibber Mike did say on that episode that he wanted to do a new segment called Jib, uh, I think it's Jibber Mike's Jibber Jabber Hour or something like that, where basically Jibber Mike just chooses a topic and you can submit a topic if you want to hear Jibber Mike talk about it. Um, he just chooses a topic and talks about it for a minute. Um, so I guess Jibber Mike, it's time to do this. A jibber jibber jab, it's Jibber Mike's. A jibber jibber jab, jibber jabber minute. A jibber jibber jab. It's Jibber Mike's Jibber Jabber Minute. Jibber Mike, uh, what are you talking about this week? Jibber everyone, today I will be talking about Jibber podcasting 
The Australian podcast landscape is vibrant and diverse with a range of Jabber covering a wide variety of topics. Some of the most popular genres of Jibber in Australia include news and current affairs, true crime, comedy, and lifestyle. In recent years, there has been a significant increase in the number of Australian podcasts being picked up by international audiences, and several Jibber podcasters have achieved international success. Jibber, the Australian podcast landscape, is thriving and continues to grow, with new shows being launched all the time. Thanks, Jibber Mike. I guess it was about us, the Australian podcast landscape. Very, very cool stuff. Thank you for sharing it with us. Um, so there you go. There's a, uh, the first ever edition of... A Jibber Jibber Jab. It's the Jibber Jabber... <laughs> The Jibber Jib, the Jibber Jabber Hour with uh, Jibber Mike. Hey guys, while I've got you um, here, can I actually just ask everyone, um, even if you don't listen to this podcast on Spotify, would love if you guys could rate it on Spotify. It really actually does help a lot in getting the podcast seen and getting it out there. So sometimes it'll say you can't rate this podcast because you haven't listened to it on Spotify. You can just skip through an episode and then it lets you rate it. If you could rate it five stars, it would mean the world to me. Um, I think we have like 115 ratings and that's fucking awesome. But yeah, if you don't listen on Spotify and can do that small thing for the show, I would really, really appreciate it. Um, One more thing, which is a, a continuation of an old kind of thing to do with me. And this is going to be, a, this will carry on into next week. Um, if you've been following, if you listen to the Hamish and Andy podcast, you will know that there was a saga last year in which, uh, obviously, I was in my school choir at St. Kevin's and I was in, I had to audition for the senior vocal ensemble. I had a, a choral scholarship to St. Kevin's, um, so a 50% scholarship. They paid 50% of my tuition. I was in the choirs and then I had to audition for the vocal ensemble. And if you listen to Hamish and Andy last year, um, I auditioned to the vocal ensemble in year 11 with the song Give Me Novocaine, which is by uh, by Green Day. And I have a little bit of it here that I should have had ready, but I didn't. And this is why this is an anti-commercial uh, co- co- podcast. Huh? I didn't put it on the board, so we're not going to hear it. <laughs> Fuck. Uh I auditioned, uh, yeah, with Give Me Novocaine from the album American Idiot. And Hamish and Andy had a bit of fun with it, blah, blah, blah. thought it was funny. Let's make fun of Mike. Awesome. Then it sort of drifted off. But what I didn't tell you guys is that while that was going on, the head of music from my high school, St. Kevin's, actually reached out to me via Insta DMs. This is probably a year ago. And he said, hey, Mike, I'm currently the music teacher at St. Kevin's, uh, the mu- head of music and choir at St. Kevin's. I uh, listened to the show wondering, do you want to come in and audition again? Do a re-audition for the senior vocal ensemble to see if you're still up to scratch. And I thought, that's great. Um, never happened on the h and show, but then I decided, I'll just do it on this show, right? It's about me. I could do it on this show. And so... Next week on the show, I will return to my high school to re-audition for the senior vocal ensemble with the song Give Me Novocaine by Green Day. Um, I will be doing it with with uh, the head of music there. It's going to be a walk down memory lane. I can't wait to go back and just um, see what the school's like now. And of course, you know, was really lucky. Went to a private school. Very, very privileged. Had a thought as well because... Producer Pat, who works on this show, catch him on the Pat and Mike show, patreon.com slash radio Mike, hashtag Pat wears slacks. Producer Pat, you know, he didn't get to go to private school and he dropped out of school in year 12 and like didn't get to see the wonders of private school, right? There's choirs, instruments, you know, guitars, sports, pools, everything, everything a kid could want except like emotional security and um help from teachers. But anyway, that's a, that's a, that's a side note. <laughs> no, no, it was fine. Um, decided, wouldn't it be fun if not only I auditioned for the senior vocal ensemble, but we bring Pat along and as a wild card, if I don't get in, if I don't pass the test, Pat does his own audition, right? Pat auditions for the senior vocal ensemble as well with his song of his choice. And we see if Pat 
a public school educated boy with no choir experience, but a lovely singing voice and a hot taste in music. We see if Pat can get into a private school senior vocal ensemble. Uh, I decided, you know, I obviously wanted to check with Pat if it was okay because I didn't want to surprise him. He's coming to record and film on the day. I didn't want to just surprise him with it. So I gave Pat a buzz to see if he'd be keen. I wake up with Sky News, the only real news. Pat, how are you? Not too bad, my friend. How are you? Good. Hey, I've got a uh, question for you. Shoot over. What would you say you missed out on as a kid? That you Definitely wanted? the 2006 Lego Batcave, hands down. What if I said to you that I am going to give you a chance to live out one of your childhood dreams? You're going to get me to meet Molly Farrett? No. Uh-huh. Next week, I am, as you know, I was private school educated. I was very lucky. You weren't, and you dropped out of high no. school, right? That is 100% correct. I was a uh, high school player while you were, you were in the big leagues, in the private boys. And there's lots and lots of things that, you know, when you're at a private school, you might be able to, like, learn an instrument or, like, play, play on the sports team and stuff, but part... I have actually scored you and me an audition into the St. Kevin's School Vocal Ensemble. Oh, my. Does that scare you? Um, I wouldn't say it scares me. I'd probably say it terrifies me. So, basically, I'm going into audition and I want to bring you along so you can audition as well. See if you're good enough for a private school choir. What do you reckon? Mike, this is a very exciting offer, but at the end of the day, I think we both know what this uh, this choir thing really means. Who's the better choir singer? And the answer's obviously me. Well, you need to prepare a song for your audition. Um, I will be doing Give Me Novocaine by Green Day, like I did 12 years ago in my original audition. You'll need to prepare a song, and we will find out who is the better chorister. If I am the better horister, you will never get to make fun of my slacks again. Not that I wear slacks. Did you just say horister? Isn't that what you just said? I said chorister, which is a, the ah. name of a, what it. <laughs> what is a horister? I thought it's what you said. And yeah, I just played along what, thinking, oh, what, that's what, a big word. What does it mean? What does it mean? Even if you thought I said it, what does it mean? <laughs> a horist out of tune. I said, Chorister, next week we find out, A, if I'm good enough to still be in the school choir, and B, if Pat is better than me, despite his non-private school education. See you then, Wow, class it. See you, Pat. 20th century class is more like it. (laughs) Bye. I hate you. Stay tuned next week to see how that audition goes. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Okay, I have a couple more things very quickly that I want to do. I want to talk briefly about Donald Trump's arrest in the USA because I just think, like, this is surely one of the biggest moments in American politics ever. Like, it's just such a... It's 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 hilarious because, one, and I'm sure if this gets posted anywhere, it's like the Trump supporters in full force are going to come at me because, like... By the way, the Michael Jackson fans are still at me because if you're a long-time listener of the show, you'll know last year I did a post, uh, a clip where I said Michael Jackson was a pedophile and it, like, still literally three days ago, someone slid into my DMs being like, fucking, you know, oh, I'm going to break your jaw if you ever talk again and just, like, comments all over my videos about how Michael Jackson, how I'm, like, the worst person ever for saying Michael Jackson's a pedophile. You grow thick skin. You, you get over it. You realise that, like, these people mean nothing in life and they're just meaningless people and Michael Jackson was a pedophile. Awkward. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, Trump going to jail, incredible. Trump being arrested, incredible. Because it's just like we, we all knew he was a shifty bloke. Like, we all knew that when he was president that Trump was like, super dodgy, you know, whether it's, like, his treatment of women and all, like, the allegations against him in that field or, like, he's, like, shady business deals. He's clearly a shady dude who has clawed his way to the top with no empathy and no fucks given about anyone else. That's Donald Trump, right? 
And it's just so clear to me that he, like, it, it's in- incredible for me to think about what goes on in that man's mind. Because, you know, like, there's no way he's going to plead guilty to any of these crimes. He'll just fight them to the death. And that's what he did when he was president. His whole thing was like, just deny, 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 deny. Even if like evidence is shoved in your face, just be like, nah, it's that's just not, that's not happening. And just incredible scenes of him like in this courtroom and like the police not holding the door for him and he like scoffs at them almost. And I don't know, the fact that like Melania Trump's not there, she's not by his side. You just think like, where is she? They've definitely split up and there is no way like their marriage is based on love. It's clearly based on status and fame. And how could you, like, how could you stand by someone like that in, in a not sort of symbolic way, I guess, in an actual way of like loving them? Super interesting. And you really have to wonder how it's going to play out. I mean, I severely doubt Donald Trump would ever go to jail. And I genuinely think that if you have enough money in this world, you can generally get your way out of pretty much any situation legally, which is a shame, but it's a reality. Like, I think we all like to think that the legal system is like airtight and works really well and it's great, but it's just as flawed a system as any other human system. And people are like subject to like bribery and like, closed, you know, money changing hand behind the scenes. Like I think that kind of stuff must happen all the time. Money in this world is power. The more money you have, the more power you have over other people. And that's just a fact. We don't like to acknowledge it all the time, but it's just a fact. I really think that Trump, I know, it's just so fascinating seeing him in this situation because he just looks so angry at everyone about it. But you know, I, I don't think anyone believes that Trump is just like this innocent guy who hasn't done anything wrong. I'm, I'm almost certain, I'm 99.999% certain that Donald Trump has done some dodgy deals. And you know what? Like, so unsurprised that this is happening. But also, it is really interesting to look at the American politi- political system at the moment because it's like, you've got Joe Biden in charge. And when Trump was president, you just got, he just got, completely demolished by the media day after day, day after day after day. You know, I couldn't think, I can't think of a single day in that four year period where Trump wasn't the main focus of the news. Right. And he's a headline generating machine. But the thing is, obviously he's a Republican and you got Joe Biden, Democrat. And I guess the, like the overall narrative is like Democrat, good Republican, bad when it's, you know, Democrat is progressive, Republicans more conservative, and you know, whatever. I I I just think Joe Biden is so hilariously bad at being president of a country, especially United States of America. Like, we all know that Joe Biden is an idiot. We can all see that he is too old to be working in this job. His brain is literally mush. He forgets everything. He seems to not have any idea what was what is going on at any point in time. And this guy is in charge of a country. And don't get me wrong. Like, I don't think that old people shouldn't be able to be, be in positions of power or making decisions. I actually think, I've reassessed a lot. I actually think old people and elderly people are the people we should listen to the most in terms of like seeking advice on things. The reason I think that, don't get me wrong, but the reason I think that is these are literally the people who survived. These are the people dying of natural causes. They're not the people who fucking got killed or died along the way. These are the people that made it. That's everyone's dream. Everyone's dream is to get to 80 and these guys did it. So, like, they must know something about the world. They must know something about life. They must have some advice to give about how they did it, right? So, like, I do think the elderly are a really good source of advice. I would always listen to someone older than me's advice. Of course, I wouldn't, like, always take it on board, but I would always hear out what they have to say. I think a lot of people dismiss the elderly, think, well, they've done living, they don't get the current world, whatever. And that's fair. Like, older people definitely don't, like, grasp how different the world, like most older people have not, like I look at my dad, he's got no idea 
about what the world is now. He thinks the world is still what he thinks it was when he was young, right? But I still think like living as long as some people do, you'd want to know what they're doing, how they got, how they didn't get killed along the way. Anyway, I digress. I just think Joe Biden is, is so bad at his job. It's hilarious. You watch him. He's just bumbling around. He's like so absent-minded. Will he die before like getting reelected? Don't know. But like it's already 2024 next year. We are already about to have another US election. And if Donald Trump runs again, which I, I mean, I doubt he will, but it just it's just crazy. What are people's thoughts on Biden? Because, you know, I guess the point I was going to make is like the media doesn't do a beat up on Biden, even though he's clearly not equipped for the job. The media doesn't beat him up the way they did Trump. Admittedly, Trump, I think, is way worse than Biden. But like Biden, I don't think should be president. But the media doesn't spend every day sort of tracking all of the stupid shit he does. It's so funny. It is absolutely amazing. Okay, I wanted to wrap by doing something we haven't done in a while, but uh, I've missed doing. So let's do one of these. It's Radio Mike's Songs You Forgot Existed. Oh, I forgot about that song. Yeah, we're going to do a song you forgot existed because I still have a bunch in my mind that I want to try for you guys. And um, this segment, again, just clearing up, it's songs you forgot existed in the sense that, like, the, the, the best test for this is when you hear the song, do you go, oh, yeah, that's what you want. It's, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That means you forgot it existed. It's like, so, it's it's not, it, it's just like a song that you're like, I completely forgot this song existed. I, I can't put it any simpler than that. So let's just do it. Uh, this is this week's song. I think you forgot existed. It's a, it's from, anyway, I'm just going to play it. All right, it's been a while since we've done one of these bad boys. This is the first one for 2023. It's songs you forgot existed. This next song is from 2000, maybe 11, and I totally forgot existed. Do you remember this bad boy? That's right, it's, it's I Like It Like, it like that, that by Hot Shell Ray, a band that has had seemingly no success after this song, and Mike has a great story about it now. Yeah, I do have a great story. Thanks, Past Mike. Um, Yeah, does anyone remember that song? Because it ca- I can't remember where it popped up, but I just remembered, I was like, fuck, I've not thought about this song since 2011 or 2012. And the funny story I have is, funnily enough, it links to the choir I was in. Once a year we would do a choir camp on, on choir and on the choir camp, we'd do a talent quest. And I remember there was this kid in year five. So like a 10 year old kid. And for the talent quest, he was singing. I like it like that by hot shell Ray. You might've heard in there. There's the lyrics. It's like, I like it like that. Yeah. Windows down, chilling with the radio on. I like it like that. Yeah. Something, something make the girls want to take it all off. Right. And you know, we know what that means. We we know what it means to want the girls to take it all off. There's no, we're not, you know, we're not beating around the bush there. We understand what all of it is. Um, but this year five kid, he, he didn't. He didn't know what that meant. So he was getting up and he was singing, you know, I like it like that. Yeah, windows down, turn the radio off. I like it like that. Yeah, uh, girls want to take it all off everyone would start laughing every time he got to that bit. And he would just stop and be like, what? Because he thought we were laughing at him. We were just laughing at the fact that he didn't understand the sexual content he was singing. (laughs) It was really cute in a way. He was just like, what? (laughs) So I just wanted to tell that story. Let's do this. The plug. Said it before, I'll say it again. Patreon.com slash Radio Mike. Help out the show if you like it. And leave a five-star review on Spotify for us, please. Why haven't you? Um, Harry Potter and the Boys, my Harry Potter fan fiction podcast. We finished season two. Season two of that podcast is over. The season finale was great. Go and give it a listen. And now you can binge 
books one and two of my Harry Potter fan fiction I wrote when I was in year seven. Um, so yeah, go over to the YouTube. There's videos going up there. I talked about there's rumors of a new Harry Potter series, TV series coming out. I talked about why I think it's A, not happening and B, a really bad idea if it is happening. Um, and there's heaps of clips and content going up on the YouTube, Instagram and TikTok at Radio.Mike as well and Twitter at It's Radio Mike. You can hear me on Two Guys, One Cup on Listener uh, talking about... AFL and my bigger year of footy and you can also hear me on Wednesdays at 2:30 p.m. on 3AW here in Melbourne talking movies and TV shows. So please stay tuned to all of those things and check out my stuff. I'm nearly on 7,000 Instagram followers. Would love a cheeky follow, but aside from that, thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next week for the audition. My name's Zoom Radio Mike. This has been the inside of me min of me mint of me mint. Bye.